Hello, it's Father Rich here in the parish office of Our Lady of Peace for the next masterpiece, number 21. Um, I'm here in front of this uh, picture that, or this framework that Father Mark Kaufman had put together, uh, I think for the Jubilee year. And it shows many different pictures of the Holy Door and St. John Paul II, St. Paul's Outside the Walls, St. Mary Major and St. John Lateran, the four major basilicas in Rome, which is a traditional tour pilgrimage walk. But I specifically wanted to point to the St. Peter's in um, Basilica, in the square, because this next masterpiece uh, is not the square, but it, it's by the same uh, artist who did the square, that magnificent square in front of St. Peter's uh, that has 284 columns that line up perfectly if you stand at certain spots, as well as the fountains that are there. Um, so this is a masterpiece done by Gian Lorenzo Bernini, usually just called Bernini. Uh, this, the, the one we're doing today is St. Teresa in Ecstasy, his most famous and uh, considered his greatest work that was done in 1652. It can be found in a church in Rome in what's called the Corona Chapel uh, because of the patrons who had commissioned Bernini to do the sculpture. And so it, it's based on a moment in the life of St. Teresa of Avila. She would have been part of the Catholic Counter-Reformation in the 16th century. I think she lived from 1515 to 1575. And in her spiritual autobiography, she talks about how having moved um, into the convent as a way to get, ready, get away from a, a, um, a fixed marriage, and that she was kind of lukewarm in her religious life, but um, that slowly she was growing in that and that she talks about one day that um, she kind of had this moment of, of in prayer and singing a hymn that she experienced as, she, as it writes in this chapter, a rapturous sense of God's love coursing through her whole being. Um, and so this would be the first of numerous kind of ecstatic experiences in prayer that St. Teresa of Avila would have. She was a great mystic, obviously, and a contemplative. And she also reformed the... Uh, Carmelite order, which we call the Discalced Car Carmelites. Um, so she talks about one of these vi visitations that a vision of an angel carrying a fire tipped spear with which he repeatedly pierced her heart, an act that induced a state of spiritual rapture. The pain, she wrote, was so severe that it made me utter several moans. The sweetness caused by this intense pain is so extreme that one cannot possibly wish it to cease, nor is one soul then content with anything but God. Um, so this is, again, from her spiritual autobiography, she had these incredible gifts of these intimate moments. And it kind of represents the, the kind of the paradox of the spiritual life that had come with, you know, great ecstasy and, and kind of spiritual pleasure, so to speak, or consolation comes great pain. That you kind of can't have one without the other, and it's kind of hard to describe. Um, so it's this moment that Bernini captures. And they talk about how he just has this gift uh, he wanted to move away from these stoic, you know, paintings or sculptures, which kind of showed something uh, in a state of, uh, you know, non-movement, to rather bringing the internal to the external, to allow it to be expressive of emotion. And to the point where some people are, you know, there's been people that have struggled with kind of almost the eroticism of this sculpture and others of Bernini because it's so real to him. He was trying to parallel it to the, uh, the most physical moment of pleasure that people can relate to, which is, you know, the, obviously the moment of, you know, sexual intercourse and climax. So that was intentional. Um, but he actually created the whole chapel to highlight this, uh, this sculpture. He, so it, the whole kind of chapel is a piece of work in which he framed this incredible sculpture of St. Teresa in ecstasy. Um, so they talk about how St. John Lorenzo Bernini was a very devout man, and I guess I didn't realize how devout he was. He had, was a great fan of the uh, Imitation of Christ by Thomas de Kempis, a, a spiritual classic, and the Spiritual Exercises by St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits. And remember, you know, that... Uh, Ignatius would have written that within a hundred years of Bernini's living, but they say that he had that on him regularly. And they really say that it probably influenced extensively uh, Ignatius's approach to scripture, which was to use your imagination to enter into the scene and to use your senses. What would it have smelled like? What would it have looked like? What would it have tasted like? What would it have sounded like? 
um, to, to engage in the scripture and make it come alive more fully for you. And they really kind of say that they can't help but believe that that had a huge influence on Bernini with his sculptures, that that was his goal. He wanted you to feel like this was real, um, that it was living, that it was moving. So his ability to show kind of movement, the drapery of even uh, St. Teresa of Ecstasy as she's laying down, her eyes are closed, she's kind of, her mouth is open as if she's kind of moaning as she mentions. Um, really, uh, really, you know, again, an, an amazing piece of work. They actually say that it's probably the best, the greatest work of a man who is probably the finest sculptor of all time. So this is probably one of the greatest pieces of work that we, uh, we know of in artwork, certainly of sculpture. Um, but they also mentioned that he was, a, he was kind of a prodigy, that he grew up, not like his dad had to challenge him to go play because he wanted to go to the Vatican. And he was born in Naples, but moved to Rome eventually pretty young and wanted to go do, do sketches and learn from Michelangelo and Raphael and the great pieces of work that were there in the Vatican from these great Renaissance artists. So he, from the beginning, had a huge, and he was commissioned by many popes because of his incredible uh, talent, uh, as well as many, you know, uh, wealthy patrons. They talk about some of the other works of art that he did. Urban this eighth, by the way, was the pope who really used him to make quite a bit uh, um, of his pieces. But the pieces of work that he uh, he was also responsible for. He did his own version of David in 1623, hurling a stone at Goliath. He did a, a sculpture of Apollo and Daphne, 1622 to 25. A great uh, sculpture of St. Longinus, 1638, that can be found in St. Peter's Basilica. And then again, he did St. Peter's Square. He did the fountains um, later, in, la later in his life. And then he did the allegorical fountain of the four rivers in the middle of Piazza Novona. If you've ever been to Rome, it's a very popular um, square in the middle of Rome. Um, and his his... He did the fountain in, of the three fountains there. He did the one in the middle. So, uh, yeah, really remarkable artist and sculptor, but also a great devout Catholic. And so we're grateful for this piece of work that shows this kind of connection. Um, they, they summarize and conclude in this way. He sought to externalize an interior state of contemplation and communication with God. He wanted to make alive, they mentioned repeatedly in here, this moment of the soul's encounter with God and to make that alive. Obviously, the statue shows that moment, but he shows it in other ones of his statues. In Bernini's art, we are made often made witnesses to a mystical miracle, but it's a miracle grounded in realism through Bernini's masterful skill and his penetrating observation of the human figure. So, St. Teresa in Ecstasy, number 21 of our masterpieces. Uh, our next one will be number 22, The Return of the Prodigal Son. I actually mentioned this in a homily in the last six months uh, by Rembrandt. So we look forward to that. Please join us. Uh, thank you for being a part of this video. Have a great day. God bless.